Hi there. Hi, welcome to Curious Collection. I'm Will. I'm Cinnamon. I uh, just want to welcome everyone in. Thank you for all the new subscribers. We're going to do a What Sold video today, kind of update you on where our sales are. We haven't talked about sales for four or five days now. So over the weekend was uh, was pretty solid. We did three fifty nine on Saturday. We did three, uh, sorry, two thirty one on Sunday, which was a little light for us, but you know it's to be expected. We've kind of have that kind of intermittently on, mm -hmm. on eBay recently is a, a good day followed by a, a mediocre day. So yeah. uh, yesterday, Monday, November 6th, we did 349 in our main store. Yeah, that's a great day. I'm, and I'm pleased. we've been working on kind of um, building our, our ad store. Mm -hmm. So the, the store intended to be primarily ads, but also we're, we're going to take all of our Playboys and maybe anything that's that's more um, risque. risque and put that in that store as well. It bothers me when I have people coming to look at jewelry and then there's like Playboy and stuff like that in the store. I think it's kind of a turnoff for that customer. Um, so we're going to we're going to take all that stuff and throw it in the ad store. Right. So yesterday I was working on the ad store, kind of rebuilding it, moving some of that inventory over to that store. And we had three items sell from that store. So that's also great. Mm -hmm. It was uh, just under fifty dollars. So we had three Playboy magazines. Uh, first of all, we had this one here sold for fourteen thirty two, and that one, um, yeah, on that one. And then we had a person purchase two of the Pam Anderson. That was her it's first cover. Yep, it's the same one. And that two. sold for thirty three ninety. So right under $50, $50 between the two. So the first Playboy, I, I want to talk about magazines just for a minute because we have done around $5,000 in magazine sales this year. Which is craziness. Right. I mean, we really don't seek them out. They're cheap. So that's why we started picking them up to begin with because we could buy a crate of like 50 for $5, $10. And what we found is that there are certain issues that are highly desirable or, you know, sometimes the better condition ones do sell for a little bit better. Um, sometimes you find, you know, just crazy stuff like autographs in, you know, some of your racing magazines. Yeah, Wayne and that Gretzky kind of stuff. We had an autograph. It was, it, there was no COA, of course. So we, we sold it in that way. Um, but we still sold it like right away. Right. So just as an example on these Playboys, the first one I showed, our profit on that's around $3. So I don't want people to misunderstand, you know, I have We're not people, killing it. <laughs> have people approach me all the time because they'll see me pick these up and they'll, you know, they think that we're, you know, making millions of dollars on Playboy magazines. That's not real. No, because um, they want to sell like their Playboy magazines for like $10 a piece. And we're like, there's no. Like, yeah, they, our, they, our profit's three and we paid a quarter <laughs> or 50 cents. So you know, let's be realistic. And then the the Pam Anderson, like I said, that's her first cover. So that is a highly sought after one by collectors, especially if it's in good condition. Our profit on those was eight dollars mm -hmm. out of you know each for each one. So out of thirty three dollar sale, we're gonna make sixteen dollars profit. Yeah, and those, I mean, those those more valuable ones, they're they're really few and far between. They when really it comes are. To... Yeah, you might get one every you know, every two years or something. If you, if you had every magazine for a two year run, you might get one every two years. That's, that's desirable. That's more profitable than the rest. Mm -hmm. Realistically, you're going to make one to $3 on these. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest anybody seek them out, but it is something that, you know, I just don't want it to cover because it is something that you'll see us selling. Mm -hmm. uh, so going into our main store, we had a Carl art pearl, Gold fill flower basket brooch sold for thirty two fifty eight. Yeah, so this is gold fill, and you can see it's just gorgeous with pearls. Um, you know, it's 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 a great little piece. Uh, next up, we've got an Allied Van Lines tractor trailer postcard. This sold for ten dollars fifty five cents. We've got a print ad for Old Bushmills Irish Whiskey. And this sold for $15.21. Now you see this one print ad 
sold for more money than any of the magazines that it would have possibly come from. Right. Which is the other nice part about, you know, the, the print ads, the magazines is that even if they're not in great condition, then we can still break them down and we can get those. As those long as the ads. ads are still in good condition, mm -hmm. uh, we can list those. Keep in mind again, not a category I would suggest people sell. It's a long tail item. That's actually part of the reason why we came up with that second store is because we didn't want to weigh down the first store with those super long tail items. Yeah. You figure a regular magazine might have between 20 and 50 ads. Again, you might sell one ad out of that magazine in an entire year. Mm -hmm. So now you're warehousing thousands and thousands of pages of print ads so that you might sell one every other day, mm -hmm. you know, a, a $10 profit every other day just really isn't a sustainable business model. No, but it is nice that you can just like put them in a file folder and stick them in a file cabinet. Um, so as far as like storage and inventory goes, it's, it's nice. Right. And you can see from behind us, we have several file cabinets that we store all of our documents. In kind of our jam. Room. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Polaroid Type 55 Land Film. These are these are in the original box, and this was an this was a sealed container. We actually had to open it to verify the contents because we had purchased multiple. Mm -hmm. This is expired. This is from 1972. Yeah. This is not a common item that you're going to run across. But again, that's why it sold, because it is hard to find this specific type of film. And mm -hmm. if you had this in new condition it would run in the you know $200 plus uh, for that package. There are collectors that like to shoot on expired film. Mm -hmm. So if you're out there and you see expired film, I'm not afraid to give away the secret. Uh, pick it up, put it out there for sale, you know, make sure you do your comps, but you know, people will buy the expired film. They like to shoot on it. If they have the old cameras, they like to have it as part of the collection. Mm -hmm. So it is definitely a good item. Ninety-five thirty-nine on that box of film. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Next up, we've got USS Carl Vinson. This is a uh, press photo for, uh, I guess it was a promotional photo from the shipbuilder mm -hmm. in Newport News. Sold for twenty-five forty-three. Uh -huh. We have a tugboat. This is the Red Star towing. It's just a four by six photo. And it sold for fifteen dollars twenty cents. We have another tug photo. This is a different buyer. Sold for $15.18. All three of those ships, we assumed, because they came like right at the same time. So we assumed they were all going to the same buyer. But they're all, all three of them are different buyers. So Right. So nice. tugboats, ship ephemera uh, is something that we specialize in. So, mm -hmm. of course, you've probably, if you've watched us, you've seen us sell that in the past. We sell some probably almost every day. We have thousands of pieces of cruise and, and ship ephemera. So mm -hmm. uh, this is an item we picked up at the flea market a few weeks ago. One of the game sellers was had a whole box on the shelf. He didn't even know what it was. Yeah, these are like those walkthrough manuals for the different games. So this is Resistance 3 Strategy Guide, sold for thirteen sixty three. We've got a box full of mixed, damaged, scratched up, worn out Christmas bulbs. And we've been lotting these up in, you know, like brands. This is the mm -hmm. end of what we had. You can see that one there stenciled. Yeah. Um, the, the vintage antique Christmas ornaments sell for good money. Thank There's you. 39 pieces in the box. We're going to pack them very carefully so we don't have any damage. They sold for $48.14. Ornaments are not my jam. They are not my passion project. I despise photographing them because they roll all over the place. They are not they are not nice. Yeah. I, I don't sell. like I don't like dealing with them because of the fragile nature of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it is something that's always concerning as you're packing them up. You're, you have make to like sure say you... a prayer over the box before it goes out to the door. Yeah. <laughs> it, they can be a challenge. Um, there, there is good money in vintage and antique mm -hmm. ornaments. It's also another one of those long tail items. You can pick it up yeah. in, in uh, March like these and you're not going to sell it until November. So 
I would caution you again. Yeah, which is exactly know. what we had done is we picked these up throughout the year and we stuck them on a shelf. They were not listed. And then we started listing them the last week of October because we knew that there was no point in even listing it because then the, the, it's going to get buried. It's going to, you know, get views, but it's not going to get sales. So we didn't right. even bother listing it until the Christmas season. Right. So you can imagine it takes a significant amount of storage space mm -hmm. to store that type of product without even, you know, the idea of being able to recapture capital for months. Yeah. So that's, you know, for a lot be of small aware. businesses, for a lot of startups, <laughs> that can be really challenging is, is buying those items, sit them on the shelf and know that they're not making you any money mm -hmm. and you have no chance of selling them because they're not listed. Yeah. Uh, next up, we've got a USS, uh, sorry, US Navy. This is a World War II photo from the Periscope. It is. It's super cool. Like it's the Periscope photo. It's an AP press photo. Um, it's just, it's just super cool. I liked this one. This sold on an international sale. It sold our, our, take on it was twenty nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. um of course they they had to pay ebay fees and that on top but that the 29.99 is what came to us and finally we've got the ss jeremiah o'brien portrait cloth patch uh this is right around three inches eight dollars 65 cents and if you saw our video the other day this is going to be able to go out with a standard envelope now yeah. so we actually lowered the price on that by four dollars to accommodate for the fact that we were going to be able to offer the lower shipping price. So I would attribute that is probably why the item sold. Mm -hmm. We've Absolutely. seen several patches over the course of the weekend sell yeah. now that we've been able to drop the price on them. So that definitely helps both us and the buyers. So that's awesome. So I hope I was able to give you some new information, maybe something you were unaware of, or maybe a different way to look at things. Uh, I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm. Good luck to you guys out there. Like and subscribe. Thank you.